Hey guys, it's Alan Yor. I'm here with a review for Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 2. It completely blew me away. It was better than the first season, which was already really good. And I just, I'm, I'm lost for words at how incredibly well made it is. The amount of uh, care and respect put into everything. The fact it's a remake. Like, here's the thing. My original impression of this series was, like, before I had watched anything on it, like, just purely looking at the cover. Like, when I was literally in Walmart looking at the cover, deciding whether to buy it or not, of season one. My first impression was, oh no, we're doing a remake of the original series where we throw in some cosplay actors to play beloved, iconic characters uh, with huge shoes to fill. And then also, the fact that it's CBS means it's going to be lower quality, it's going to be like those CW shows, um, like Superman and Lois and stuff like that, which I don't really like. So, and I was just totally wrong. I was completely wrong. It is an incredibly well-made series, high quality, amazingly written, very well directed, very strong continuity, every character is developed and highly fleshed out. Uh, you learn more about these characters than we have before, but we never compromise anything about them. Like, they, like, there's no race swapping or accent swapping. Everyone is the way they should sound and look. Um, and they go into their roles very seamlessly. And it's, like, I honestly, not all of them, but, like, some of these characters, some of these actors I like more than their original counterparts. That's how good they are. So, yeah, just, just amazing. Honestly, I'm, I'm just completely blown away about uh, how incredible this series is. Now, I don't know if it's the most successful thing ever because it's probably quite niche, um, but I really do hope it is getting some attention and the praise it deserves because it just completely blows, it just blows out of the water. And we need to send a message to studios that this is the kind of content we want, the quality level and standards, this is it. We don't want this to flop and then they go back to crappier, inferior products. I don't want that. So really, really hope this does well, or as good as it can. Because if I had to guess, this probably doesn't, it probably didn't do as well as Discovery, but I like this show significantly more than Discovery. So yeah, um, but it probably did better than Picard. I think Picard was pretty much just a, a, a dumpster fire from what I've heard. I haven't seen it though. So uh, let's start with the plot section for this season. Well, that will be a little bit difficult because this is my favorite kind of series. I love series that does self-contained, separated episodes. Um, but I respect it even more when they have strong continuity like they do here. So, for example, characters' backgrounds and stories will become relevant for each of these episodes when it does. And that's good because the series obviously has different directors for every episode. Um, but they're all communicating with each other enough to actually carry on the elements that the past ones did before them. Very, very strong stuff uh, in the writing room. So, yeah, this is not like Walking Dead or Breaking Bad where there's like one goal for the whole season. Instead, every single episode is self-contained and wildly different from each other. So some of the ideas, so some of the plots for some of these episodes are as follows. So Spock and Chapel have started a romantic relationship. Um, the main bad guys are the Klingons, where there's the threat of war, and the Gorn, which they pretty much might as well be at war with already, um, but Starfleet's kind of pretending like they're not. Um, and uh, also we have to deal with, this is what I meant about continuity. So in the first season we had the issue of genetic modification for Una, uh, so that gets dealt with in this season. So we get an entire episode, which is kind of like Law & Order Star Trek edition. And um, it's a great episode, actually. So, yeah, um, it's it's dealing with the potential legal consequences of the first officer of the Enterprise um, uh, concealing their genetic modification, which is illegal uh, by Starfleet standards. Then we also have um, the security officer Singh goes travels back in time and meets her brother, which. I was going to say it might be a spoiler, but honestly, it's kind of a given because of how famous he is. So yeah, Singh has to go and meet the equivalent of Adolf Hitler in the Star Trek universe, which is her brother, Khan. Or I don't know if it's brother, but um, just a family member from the lineage. So that's a super good episode as well. 
We learn a lot more about the doctor, I forget his name exactly, the black guy doctor. He uh, is apparently a hidden badass and was like a war veteran who was known as like the butcher. Sort of like the witcher, uh, butcher of Vladikin, but it was the butcher of whatever planet that war happened on. Just incredible stuff. Every, uh, every character has so much to say and do. Everyone is in depth. There's no weak links at all. It's pretty, pretty mind blowing. So yeah, um, let's start with the positive. So this season is better than season one. The main reasons are as follows. Uh, because it carries over every element I loved about season one, which is the intelligence, the maturity, uh, the expectation defying stuff. Uh, it does all that, but it also improves on the weak links, which were visuals, action, um, and I guess tying it to the rest of the Star Trek universe, this one felt a lot more relevant and connected rather than the first season, which was kind of its own thing. Um, so yeah, it is better than the first season for sure, in practically every way. Uh, also, another reason is the first season had two episodes, which I wasn't like crazy about. Um, I wasn't crazy about the um, the child sacrificial episode. It was just kind of awkward and I've also seen it a hundred times before. It has a very unsatisfying weird resolution as well. And I also did not like or was I didn't hate them but I also wasn't in love with the um, the horror episode where they kind of copy Ridley Scott's Alien. Um, which on paper I should like but the, uh, the rest of the series was so so intelligent and mature that that episode just felt like a weak link because it was like not dialogue heavy at all. It was just, you know, basically doing xenomorphs and running from them. But this season only has one bad episode compared to two. And that is, uh, we'll get to that in a second. You already know what episode it is if you've seen this series. I can't even believe it exists in the first place, but it does. So yeah, um, season two, just, I love the characters. I have a huge crush on both Singh and um, Chapel, and I it's almost like crazy, like I don't get how Chapel exists, like it's just so wild to me to have like such an absurdly attractive person be like the the main doctor medic on staff, and I, I, I just randomly accidentally actually, I didn't do this on purpose, I accidentally found out why she is the way she is. So. Chapel, if you didn't know, her actor was a final contestant for Australia's Top Model. So if you're wondering why she's so absurdly attractive, that's why. They literally put a model on the cast. But she's not like other models who sometimes get film roles and aren't good at acting. They just got there because they're pretty. For example, the Bond girls from like the 26 James Bond movies, those women are usually casted based off looks, not acting prowess. Um, Sydney Sweeney, for example, again, also Emily Rajowski, Alexandria Daddario, a lot of these uh, female actors are, um, sometimes they're not real actors and studios will cherry pick them just to, you know, just to sell them basically, sell their beauty. But this is a character I highly respect and it's the same for all the characters. I really want to put it out there, but just... What I'm trying to say is, that was a convoluted way of saying I really like the cast and I really like the characters. I'm, I'm actively on their side for each and every one of them. It's an example of a show that is accidentally diverse, which is a great thing. And it does it perfectly. We're not hung up on real world politics or anything like that. Everyone just happens to be diverse and very unique and interesting and I like them all. And it's very natural. It does not feel forced at all. So. Yeah, I, I just, I can't believe how good this series is, is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, love the action, love the cameo characters. They're not even cameos because they're going to be staples going forward. I don't want to spoil one, but uh, there's a particular man who shows up in here that's going to make you smile. And uh, again, these, these, these actors are filling in these shoes so effortlessly. Like, I immediately liked him. Same with Kirk. Like, even Kirk, it's like, I really like Chris Pine as Kirk, for example. Um, and this guy, I liked him a lot too, for different reasons, but different in a good way. It's because it's unique and different, but not compromising the character of who he is. I'm trying to remember who is the original Kirk. I, I, he was in the Big Bang Theory a lot, but as I said, I'm not a huge original series fan, so I just don't have that knowledge really. Um, yeah, 
I almost like Ethan Peck more than Leonard Nimoy. I know that's crazy to say, but I almost do. That's how good these actors are. Just insane. Really, really good. Another thing I want to say is that the episodes are wildly expectation defined. Um, you've got such a variety here, honestly. Like, I loved the... Actually, this was one of my least favorite episodes, but I still respect how different it was. Um, I respected how different the animation one was. It literally starts off in animated world, they go through a portal, and then go back to live action world. Like, it's just crazy. This series completely just goes above and beyond in so many areas. Um, the best episode of this season, in my opinion, is hard to choose because there's a lot of good ones, but I really, really liked the 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 war flashback episode where they get a Klingon defector on the ship and uh, we have both doctors, we get to see them back in their days of in the Klingon war. It's kind of like World War II, they're in the trenches, there's like mortar bombs everywhere so you can't sleep properly. They have bad technology so they can't heal people properly. It's incredible stuff. That episode was so good. And that was also an example of an episode that ends on a sad note in a good way. So I did not like the the child sacrifice episode in season one because it was just so dark and kind of pointless, like you walk away with nothing. But with this one, it was sad, but it like it made sense and it was realistic as well for his character. So I can't really, because I disagree with his decision ultimately, what he does with the Klingon defector, but like, hey, it's realistic. It's not like most American television that always has a happy ending, etc. So yeah, just a huge fan of this series. The negatives. There are some. This was nearly a perfect season, but there are some negatives. Number one, uh, the Spock and Chapel relationship, completely wasted, very disappointing. Number two, there's one terrible episode, which is the, sec the penultimate one, the Subspace Rhapsody. This is a Disney musical in Star Trek. You get to see Spock and Klingons actually doing musical theater. I'm not joking. If you don't believe me, go watch it for yourself. It's cringe, it's embarrassing, and the biggest problem about it is that it's not true filler because there's too many important plot points in there and it also contributes to the former problem of the wasted Spock and Chapel relationship because they, the two of them break up in this episode through a comedic musical theater bit. It's, and she's like dancing around the bar saying, I don't need Spock, I don't need no man or whatever. And it's like, I, yeah. I know why you have to break up, but like, damn, there was there a better way to do that? From a writer's perspective, I know the characters are forced to sing and everything, but like, from a writer's perspective, really, you're gonna have, you're gonna have Chapel break up with Spock through, while she's drunk doing a musical theater. It's just embarrassing. So I'm gonna pretend that episode never existed. I'm gonna pretend it's non-canon. Might as well be non-canon at this point, um, just because of how wild and weird it is. But otherwise, from those points, oh yeah, last negative. The final episode. Love the final episode. This was actually a better done version of the horror Xenomorph episode in the f in the first season. It's kind of similar, but like way done way 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 better. Um, and the problem though is that there's a literal to be continued pop up at the end of the episode because we get the biggest cliffhanger ever, and I have a problem with that because it's not. Now, everyone hates cliffhangers. Sometimes it can be good, for example, in, in Walking Dead. If there's an episode next week, you're okay with the cliffhanger because you're going to find out next week, right? But here, I have to wait until next year just to finish this episode. It's not even the setting up the future plot lines or getting you excited about the future. Well, it is getting me excited, but you know what I mean, right? It's not setting up potential plots and ideas for the future to get excited about. It's you have to wait till next year to just finish the episode itself. The climactic finale itself does not end in this episode. It is like halfway through, it is like just black screen to be continued. It is so disappointing. I'm gonna give season two of Strange New Worlds a nine out of 10. It is some of the best TV I've ever had the pleasure of watching. It is one of the best sci-fi pieces of content ever made. Uh, the characters are just so in depth and so likable and so well portrayed. The uh, writing is very mature and intelligent. This is one of those, this is one of the only series where the characters can have an answer to literally every single problem, but I'm not mad about it because they're so, they're all geniuses and it, it makes perfect sense. Their explanations always make sense. It's never contrived. It's just a very intelligent and mature series. So 
highly recommend Strange New Worlds. Please give it a try. Even if you don't care about Star Trek, I guarantee you're going to have an amazing time with it.